Welcome, my stars of Orion. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Orion Kelly, that autistic guy. I'm all about providing validation and support for autistic people and their loved ones. Now, as one of my heroes, David Letterman, would say, my next guest needs no introduction. <laughs> so let's do it. Kimberly Rhodes, a bona fide 100% social media superstar. I'm sure you've seen Kimmy's TikToks with her world famous character, Cigarette Mum. She also does some incredible content on living with pots, which we'll talk about in this video. Plus, Kimmy has something deeply personal to share about her connection with autism. So, the world famous Kimberly Rhodes is here. I can't believe it. Kimmy, welcome. Hi, <laughs> thank you so much for having me. Oh my goodness. Okay, now I just want to start off by saying um, I kind of I kind of can't believe this is happening and I, I can't even believe you're doing it. Honestly, I still can't because you are, you are massive um, and you're so funny and so smart. Um, and I, so I just want to say thank you because I really don't think I deserve this, but I'm stoked to uh, have you on. That is not true. You do you do deserve this because I literally went to your page to, you know, kind of help me find out that not that I just went to your page and it's just like, do, 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 I'm autistic. You know, I did my research <laughs> and everything, but your page was one of the pages that really helped me realize like every time you were talking, I was just like, oh wow. I relate to like pretty much everything he is saying, you know, and then you would, talk about women and like being it, it just it made sense it made sense so you do deserve this and at the end of the day we're both just two autistic people having a conversation <laughs> yeah absolutely i just want to start at the start um and i want to talk about your connection um in, into autism in a second but first there are people uh who are watching this they have to know your content and your tiktoks and stuff but and if they and I'm, they have to but if they don't i just want to say okay so for starters so kimberly Rhodes is on um is on tiktok and youtube and instagram and all these platforms and i don't i feel like a moron saying that because everyone already knows that but i just want to say that if you haven't checked out especially like you know youtube and tiktok if you haven't checked out kimmy's uh, cigarette mum uh, character and also some of the other like she just does the best um, observations about uh, pots like I was watching one um, with my wife um, the fainting one uh, and like shit that's funny um, and you know just the your the way you deliver it and your personality and I mean you know don't, I don't want you to censor yourself or anything but yeah be yourself but I just love it it's so funny and there's a type of humor and delivery that neurodivergent people tend seem to have um, that I just that is so different but so awesome uh, and so the first I just want to I just want to say at the start before I delve into this um, mm -hmm. shitty or funny uh, that's the first thing I want to say <laughs> thank you thank you um, and people have to go and check out like the, the cigarette, mum, cigarette mum character and even your dad character like I love how he's trying to get you to dance and stuff when he's drunk but, <laughs> um, yeah, so just brilliant characters and just a fantastic, um, you know, fa fantastic performing. And I really love how you've made your life. And now here's the thing, right? This is what I want to say. So it's funny, cool, but it's not funny. There's nothing funny <laughs> about this being your mum and dad. <laughs> there's, there's nothing funny about. I love the juxtaposition <laughs> of the. the yeah. I love that. I love dark humor. I love my childhood was shitty, uh, real shitty. However, I, la I look back now and I'm an adult, I'm 26 years old. And so by this time, my mom was a mother. My dad w wasn't, my dad was off in the Air Force or something at this point, but anyway. So I look back and I'm just like, wow, they did these things? Huh, okay. <laughs> and then I just like, I kind of chuckle about it. You know, I cry about it too, but I, I really, I know that there are other people dealing with that kind of thing and so or have dealt with that kind of thing and so I really wanted to like just like we all like you're not alone kind of thing like you like you're my mom also was like this or my dad also was like that 
And even if, you know, it's not the mom and dad, people are like, oh, my mom was like your dad or my dad was like your mom or whatever it may be. And even people in like Scotland and Ireland, I guess cigarette moms are really big over there. And I'll have people be like, you know, <laughs> Yeah, my mom's like that. And I'm like, even in Ireland? And they're like, oh, yeah, they're the same everywhere. <laughs> and I'm just like, so uh, do you guys have cigarette moms in Australia? Oh, abs oh my goodness. Yes. A a a yes. A absolutely. So what do they sound yeah. like? Well, have you seen Kath and Kim? <laughs> um, Shut up. I love that show. <laughs> uh, all right, Kim. All right. Yeah. I love it. Love it, love it. Not yes. to make fun of your accent, but they do it. It's so like amped up. It's great. I love it. A bit of it's got more of a gravel to it, and of course when they laugh, it's oh, like, yeah. Uh, um, yeah. But yes, I, but and you know, I, I think it's see. This is the thing, right? It's so universal. But what I find fascinating is you could just make TikToks and videos um, of just like. Um, personal stories, yeah, and that would resonate with people. They might be sad, or they, you know, but, the, but you decided to do it um, from more of a comedic point of view. You've talked about the juxtapositioning, but like, what? So, why did why did you decide to, to do these? Because the bottom line is, these TikToks, these videos, these are pieces of comedy, they're pieces of performance, but there's truth and reality to them, presumably. Yeah. So, you know, how did that how did that come to you to decide to do that? I mean, is this like a therapy thing when you start to do your own parents? Kind of. So I, you know, that once they both died, my dad, my mom died like two and a half. <sighs> See, here's the thing <laughs> with my mom. I hate to say it, but like we didn't get along. So like, I'm like, oh, when did she die again? Like, <laughs> so I hate to say that, but I really, I want to say two and a half, three years ago. And then my dad was seven years ago. And so once my mom died, a light bulb kind of went off in my head because, you know, there was that relief. I'm currently reading right now, I'm Glad My Mom Died by Jeanette McCurdy. And I'm gonna be doing YouTube videos about that here soon, but kind of that relief whenever kind of your abuser dies. And so I kind of took everything she did to me and I thought to myself, I'm gonna make a life out of this. Screw you. And I just, I've always been a performer. I've always, been a singer I've always done all of that stuff and I already had like a following somewhat because I would do like other comedy things and I would talk about pots and so I just like one day grabbed like a cigarette thing and I just started imitating my mom and I was like this would be this could be a really good series and then I talked to my dad's family and I was like, how do you feel about me making a character out of dad? And they were like, do it. They're like, that's gonna be funny. Because my dad's family is aware that he was a drunk. You know, we all love Jack. He was a great guy, but he was a drunk and we were all aware of it. But his brother, my uncle Barry, loves these beer dad videos so much. He's like, it's like looking right at him. Cause I look just like my dad. And so yeah. when I put the Steeler cap on, all of that stuff, he's just like, this is weird. <laughs> so I, I decided, yeah, to do those just to kind of, yeah, help cope with the trauma that I went through as a child. Mm. Um, there are things that I would never make a skit about. You know, I definitely draw the line somewhere um, because I can't make a skit about my mom pouring boiling hot water on my dad that just like wouldn't. That, that's just not funny. <laughs> like, there, you have to, there's a line of the juxtaposition. You know what I mean? Like, you can't yeah. go over that line or it's just, and I've gotten pretty close to that line. Pretty close. But that's, you know, you have some people that are like, this was really triggering for me. And I'm just like, I'm really sorry that it was triggering for you. I really do feel bad. Yeah. And part of me is like, should I put a trigger warning? And then part of me is just like, I don't know. Comedy is so subjective, so it's hard. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, given my the way my brain works and the kind of way my, my humor works too, um, I kind of find it almost offensive that I, that I would have to tell people they may be offended or something by, by something you'd say. You know, I, I think that's really fascinating. But I want to get to POTS, but also want to talk about parents. But I just want to say something. This occurred to me. It just uh -huh. occurred to me that through, through some of your, um, your relatives, um, you, through your work, you are keeping like your dad alive to them. Yeah. But conversely, through your work, you are keeping your mum alive. And 
it just occurred to me how completely different those two results are. It's, it's, it's a fascinating thought. Maybe it's just me. No, it is. And I've actually thought about this because it's like one of the most triggering things for me when I was a kid was hearing Kim! Like that was it. That was, and it's still like me doing that gets me going. So every time I do that in a skit, it's not easy, but like, and watching it back sometimes even, you know, but I can also like go back and laugh at it too somewhat. Like I've gotten to that point. There was a point where I could never do this, but I've gotten to the point where now I'm like, God, she was annoying, but <laughs> that's kind of funny to laugh at now. And it's kind of become my tagline. So I've kind of in a way reclaimed it. Yeah. And I'm reclaiming everything that they did to me. And I'm yeah. making the best out of it. And I'm helping others. And I'm making people laugh. And because sometimes they were just silly. And, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes they were horrible. But I, you know, I just try and focus on the silliness and yeah. the absurdness, just the absurdity of my childhood, really. I think absurd yeah. is a very good word to use. But also, uh, to me, like, it's, it's, it's like a devastating uh, a thought to me. See, I've, I've got young kids, right, mm -hmm. and I've gone through a childhood. So I understand the childhood you've gone through. It's not something that I can't imagine. Well, I can imagine it. And I understand the triggering of certain things, right? Yeah. Um, you know, when I... I Till I was five, I thought my name was Jesus Christ. That's a joke, everyone. Do you see the joke? They were yelling at Jesus Christ. I thought they were yelling at me. Do you see the joke? That's the joke. Right. Um, then it was damn it. I thought my name was damn it for the next 10 years. Damn it. Damn, damn it. it. Damn it. Um, that, that's not my name, apparently. Uh, I refer to myself as Orion now. But hang on. I'm an autistic guy. And, and I'll be honest with you. I struggle. I struggle, Kimmy. Like, I am shit house pretty much at life. I'm a shit house parent. I'm a shit house partner. I'm a shit house person, basically. If if you want to talk about regulation, keep myself on track. And my worst nightmare is being my, you know, being your parents, my parents, whoever's parents. Yeah, because like, I've got kids. And then I think I hear autistic people a lot talk about their parents the same way you do, right? My biggest fear, because I came from them, right? <laughs> they made me. I'm gonna be them. Yes. And is, is that something that you, I know you're not going to be them and do them, right? You're your own person, but is that something ever, ever you ever think about too, whether it's with your, your wife or, or kids or pets or, or, you know, friends or family, is that something you ever think about? 100%. I, so at the beginning of the pandemic, I drank a lot. I was getting drunk every night. You know, I was depressed. Um, I was alone. Like my dad had died. I didn't have a relationship with my mom. She was dying, but like, I still didn't have a relationship with her. So I was like pretty much alone. So yeah, I would drink every night. And then I stopped that because I realized that was going bad very quickly. It was, I was drinking like six a night, like six beers a night or not beers, but like drinks, whatever. <laughs> and Like yeah. it was just like, it was bad. So yeah, in that way, I almost turned into my dad. I mean, both of them are drunks, but that was more of a, my dad would just sit there and drink. Now that, thank God, I, I can't drink anymore because of my pots and I'm on a beta blocker now, so I really can't drink. <laughs> um, so in a way my pots saved me from that, but it was also my mind. I also like chose to stop. So it wasn't just that, but, and then my mom, I actually, I cry a lot about this with my wife. I'm like, I can't believe I just yelled at you like that. I'm so sorry. Like, and, and not that I'm, not that it's even anything like my mom would do, but I just see myself getting slightly angry and I'm like, I'm just like her. I'm just like her. And Hannah goes, no, you're not because you wouldn't be sitting here crying about it. Yeah. She's like, you wouldn't feel bad you wouldn't be saying, I'm just like her. I'm just like her. I'm just like her. Like you are actively trying to not be like your mom. Yeah. And yeah. so she, that really helped me because like, she really was just like, Kimmy, you're nothing like her. She's like, you are just the sweetest. You're not anything like her and you're not yeah. like your dad. You're not, I mean, you are like your dad, but yeah. Not, <laughs> not in that, yeah. you know, alcoholism regard, you know? Yeah. I mean, you know, thank God for, for 
partners that we have, obviously. Um, and I think from, from my point of view, um, you know, what it's the devil's the devil advocate inside my own brain saying, well, Orion, you know that um, what you have is genetic or has been passed down from someone and it came from them. And then you start to think, well, wouldn't people are probably looking at me going, you know, they're probably like that when you were a kid because you being you as a kid, like you would, you know, who wants to raise you? And then I have, ki- I have kids, you know, I have an autistic son. It's no walk in the park. But then I think to myself, yes, but I'm the one breaking the chain here. Like I'm yep. the one. And I don't do it every day, but I'm the I'm the one making the stand, breaking the chain. Like there's only like there's things that that you, parents can do to an autistic kid um, that that I would never do to an autistic kid, right? That that, yeah. that has been done. Um, and, and this is the this is the part. But then it's like the fact that it's actually I'm gonna I'm breaking a stand, I'm breaking the chain, but I'm not perfect, but I'm doing it. Just shows how similar you actually feel like you can be from you know from an experience that you you feel you you know is like completely. Like, well, well, there's good and there's bad. It's really, it's a really horrible thing to navigate. Well, and whenever, you know, you stand there, you look in the mirror, you look like them. Because while yeah. I do look like my dad, I also look very much like my mom. So, you know, I look, I look in the mirror. I look like Mary Pat. I laugh like Mary Pat. I don't talk like her, but <laughs> I, you know, my hair is exactly the same as hers. Like I, the reason I went red for a while is because right after my mom died i would be in the shower and my mom's hair was probably a bit darker than this my natural hair color is a bit darker than this and i would see the hairs on the wall and i'd be like oh my god those are my mom's hairs and so i dyed my hair so i didn't have to see that (laughs) and then i was like i stopped and because i was just like okay you like your brown hair keep your brown hair you know but the red is still peeking through this isn't my natural right now (laughs) But yeah. So I want you to talk to me and, you know, because of the people watching, like I have, I think pots are in the kitchen to cook pasta. Um, Can you explain to me the pots that you're talking about? Yes. So that is postural. So think standing, postural, orthostatic, which is your, like the thing that makes your blood move around. Tachycardia. So your heart can get tachycardic syndrome which is a syndrome um so basically what that means is that when i stand or move or basically just live my life you know people used to think it was just when you were standing and it's just like no i mean we are kind of always moving my blood doesn't quite properly get around my body properly yeah (laughs) and so the blood doesn't get to my brain properly or if i eat the blood will go to my stomach to try and help digest that food and I'll lose blood from my brain. So like after I eat, I don't feel well every time. Wow. Every time. If I move too much, like for example, my cat got out yesterday. I had to chase her down the steps. I had to hand off the cat to my wife and go sit because I was about to faint. Like it just okay. little things like that. It's just, it ruins, <laughs> hate to say it ruins, but it, it impacts your day-to-day life 100 percent, and it's like people are like but you don't look disabled and i'm like what does that even mean <laughs> it's like the same with yeah. you don't look autistic what does that yeah, mean yeah, yeah. Well, I, so, but also people can say you know you like for example something i have you don't look like you're suffering from a vestibular migraine it's like what the heck? are you in my inner ears what are you talking about um yeah. you know like I, like i get really bad vestibular migraines so the kind of the, the ear balance thing um and you know like even just moving my moving with the trunk of my body to look on the you know down the aisles of supermarkets like you're trying to find stuff on the shelf I'm like I'll just have vomit if I do it too, do it too quick this is the thing right there's there's so many parts of you know different conditions that really impact your quality of life now from what you've just, just described that is a bloody living hell base now is that since since childhood is is that a diagnosis you've had all your life no so I got diagnosed. When I was 23. So, for example, in gym class, um, whenever we would run the mile in elementary school, I was always, like, back with, like, the disabled kids. And I never knew why, because I was one of them. I didn't have the stamina. So, like, I would start out with all the rest of the kids. And then I would just slowly kind of fall back, fall back, fall back, because I would get so tired. And yeah. I remember looking up like tech in my, in my gym teacher just be like, you're not breathing through your mouth. You're not doing this right. You're not doing this right. 
and like I remember going home and looking at techniques on like how to run better and how to run longer and faster and I just couldn't because he yeah. wanted me to run a mile I can't run a mile then I could do a quarter mile and keep up with all the kids not now <laughs> I could do a quarter mile and keep up with all the kids but then I would start to fall back so that is probably one of the first instances that I realized like something kind of clicked in my brain and I was like, wait a second, that doesn't make sense. So then I got older and I started having trouble climbing the steps. I started having a lot of pain in my knees and then the heart start like stuff started. So while I was climbing the steps, my heart would just like boom, 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 boom. And like it would just keep going up and up and up. So then as I got older, by the time I would get up to the top of the steps, I'd be like falling back because I'd be like near fainting and like doing things like standing up, like it just started getting worse and worse and worse. So then I was like, okay, something isn't right here, <laughs> you know? And so then I went and I went to a cardiologist and for years I was, I was told it was my anxiety all this stuff because I would be like telling the doctors like I'm fainting I'm having heart palpitations all this stuff and they were like it's just your anxiety it's just because you're a teenager da 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 it's because you're on your period da 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 and it's just like it was none I mean yeah I probably had a little anxiety but that's not why that was happening mm. and so then finally I got a tilt table test from a cardiologist and he put me on the thing and what it is they strap you on this tilt table and they literally tilt you up until you like they you can hear your heartbeat throughout the room because they have you hooked up to all these monitors and so as i'm going up you just hear my heart rate increase like crazily and <laughs> and i went i don't feel good and he went get her down he went you've pots <laughs> and like it was so like it was so like just obvious because if your heart rate you your heart shouldn't amp up more is, is that making sense what i'm saying like do you get what i'm yeah. saying so mine was going up from like i don't know however what are we we're like 70 regularly like 70 or something beats a minute i don't know but mine was going up to like 150 175 like it was well, not okay. good yeah so it went up like 50 or 60 beats <laughs> And yeah. the doctor was like, yeah, she's pot. That's a big jump. Yeah, yeah. get her down. Because I was like, I'm going to faint. And he like saw the color all drained from my face. And he was like, yeah, get her down. She is pots. So I didn't faint, which was good. <laughs> it, got, it came really close. I was just like, oh, my God. It was so yeah. bad. It was so bad. And then, wow. so, yeah, I whenever he said I had pots, I literally started crying because I'm like, finally, I have an answer. I had done all the research. I figured out what a tilt table test was kind of like, and I'm not saying like I'm a doctor and I'm right about everything, but like kind of like with autism, I did my extensive research and how it lined up with my life. And I was like, yeah, this is what that is. And so I went and got it checked and I was very much so correct. Yeah. So how, how did, how did the POTS like diagnosis change your life? Or is it like just, just a, a title and there's no real treatment? I mean, do, how does it actually help you? Because you sound like you, you have quite uh, a challenging day-to-day -day life and there's not much you can do about it. Yeah, so I am on a beta blocker. So that actually, my wife and I are both on the same one. It helps us crazily. Like we couldn't, like I couldn't have my job on even on TikTok if I wasn't on a beta blocker. I would be bedridden. My wife would probably be bedridden. POTS is like that. Like it's, it's think of it like this. Um, it's like somebody being an end stage heart failure. Oh my God. Okay. Yeah. So like there are, there are like articles out there that like support that, that it is like end stage like or like heart failure, like your heart is failing. That's what those symptoms feel like for wow. a hot patient. So without our beta blocker, we would feel like our heart was about to like die <laughs> because yeah. it just is that like it, it really, oof, it's bad. <laughs> it's not life without our beta blocker is not fun i mean life now is not the easiest with pots but we both agree that it has changed our lives so much for the better so we yeah. were both on that before we even met each other so okay it was good. 
and, and look, I, I can I can just get the sense from listening to you briefly that how serious a condition it is and how how debilitating it can be. But I can't yeah. tell you how funny some of your videos are talking about like fainting in at college or school or whatever. Like, I mean, I'm not trying to make a joke about it. Oh, no, like, it is you, funny. We we you laugh are. about it like, all the time. We do. Yeah, we, I mean, literally, my friends called them the Kimmy catchers, and I was like, "Are you guys <laughs> serious right now?" <laughs> and my yeah, that's. <laughs> My professor, well, she's not my professor anymore because I'm not at school anymore, but um, we hang out and we laugh all the time. She's like, I cannot believe those girls called you the, called themselves the Kimmy Catchers. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I got, I got close with a few of my professors, like two of my professors were at my wedding and I'm still very close with them because they were there with me during all of this pot stuff. Like... Mm. I was literally fainting in the middle of class. Like it was so, so rough. I finally like went uh, through the disability thing at school. So like I had extended time and like all that stuff, but they were just so understanding and like heard me out whenever I would explain what this is. And like, they were just the best and they, yeah. yeah. So I'm, I was so, th and my friends were so amazing and Hannah was so amazing because Hannah was here with me at the tail end of my schooling. I'm not graduated yet, but I just taken some time off, but she, you know, would come and pick me up from class. So I didn't have to walk. Like everybody is just so accommodating and so sweet. And it was just, I couldn't have had a better group of people around me for that situation uh, I'm, i can only imagine um how debilitating it would be to do really anything did you did, did you ever try like i don't know of your own ways of fixing things i mean like how, how do you you know how, what do you what do you try I mean, to help yourself i do things like i mean just things i found online like you know putting my feet up against the wall to get the blood back to my brain if i don't feel well or you know, if I feel faint, I don't just wait till it comes on more. I try and sit first before, like, I don't try and push through it. You know what I mean? Because yeah. I used to try and push through it. And then I just end up falling flat on my face, literally. And so, yeah, if I just feel it, I'm just like, okay, time to sit. Eating small meals throughout the day. I don't, I, if I have, like, one big meal, yeah, I'm done for. I'm done yeah. for. It's like, yeah. thank, think of, like, Thanksgiving. So, like... A normal meal for me, how you feel after Thanksgiving, or gosh, you're in Australia, so you don't know. <laughs> Christmas, yeah, Christmas. Yeah, Christmas, whatever, big holiday where there's lots of food, <laughs> you know, and you're like falling asleep after, that's how I feel after like every decently side, like every normal meal that a person should eat. So like Hannah and I don't eat three big meals a day. We, yeah, yeah. We, we eat sporadically throughout the day. We snack. We have like grapes here, crackers here, you know, an egg and toast in the morning. So like we do kind of like do breakfast, but still very small. Yeah, yeah it's kind of like grazing. I really liked, uh, that's kind of the way I, I eat, believe it or not. I really like that way of going, hey, how did we get to autism for you? How, how did you, how did this become part of the conversation and, and yeah. how did you look into this? And it seems like a really fascinating, a fascinating journey for you, given, you know, yeah. the, your life experience. Well, you know, when I found out I had POTS, I was like, okay, so I know what's wrong with me physically, <laughs> but I still like, and I hope you don't take offense to this, but I've always felt off. You know what I no, mean? No, definitely not. Yeah. A hundred percent. Out of place, mis mismatch. Absolutely. A hundred percent. So I really felt off and I felt just like off. I don't, I don't know how to describe yeah. it. Like, it's just you people have always made me aware that I don't quite, I'm not the same, if that makes sense. Like I'm just a little bit different and I think a little bit differently. And I was looking up, is the word comorbid, co- Morbidities, yep. Yeah, that word. <laughs> I can never say that word. I hate it. I, like, I just say co-occurring conditions to be honest with you. But yeah, yeah. co-occurring. Yeah. And POTS and autism often go hand in hand. I was like, all right, so I, and you know, I'm not trying to find more wrong with me. Trust me. If any of you are just like watching this and you're like, she's just trying for, no, I don't want more wrong with, wrong with me. I don't no. want another no. thing added to the list. Trust me. That's the last thing I want. But whenever you realize 
that you're a certain way and you don't know why, you go searching for answers. And that's what I did. And I did it with pots and I re like and I really realized like I've just always been slightly different than other people. And so, you know, some things, my sensitivities to light, my um, sensitivity to certain sounds, temperature. I don't know why my mind is like blanking right now, but like. No, it, no. I mean, sensory so sensitivities is really, um, is really a, a large part of the sensory sensitivity. Some have a hyper, hyper over and some have a hypo under. You know, I might have a hyper sensitivity to smells and I'll be startled by noises, but then I might have a hypo and under sensitivity to some pain. Yeah. Putting that aside, you know, this is, so you and I, I worked in radio, you're a content creator, but we, I have communication and interaction challenges disproportionately to neurotypical people. I am horrific <laughs> communication and interaction for the most part. Um, and it doesn't make any sense, but I always try to tell people, but wow. you know, remember YouTube content creation is done in, my house by myself and you know radio is done literally in a radio studio in a box by yourself yeah. <laughs> um so it's kind of like it's an insulation from the real world people don't realize but you know the, the the interacting and the communication but also so that's another aspect of it you can talk about but also there's this kind of restrictive or repetitive behaviors which is like this r routine this, same, this, this routine. idea of, yeah. yeah and also soothing or regulating yourself through stimming and repetitive behaviours. Um, like, for example, you do a character, yeah? I like, you know, I'll make, st I'll do stupid voices. Now, people will, will find that horrifically um, annoying, but for me, it actually, the sound or the feel of it in my mouth my, or my body makes me regulated, right? So I, I'm like the stupid yes. voices guy. And it just, yes. it, it, and just completely inappropriate um, times. Um, mm -hmm. and, and, and that's just, that who I am, and that's a that's a sensory regulating thing, you know. And obviously, it can set people off. But you know, so these are the kind of things that you know we we talk about when we talk about you know a, an autistic I, kind of diagnosis. Yeah, I just like there's just so many instances where I was just like either yelled at or reprimanded or like, why are you trying to act like an adult? Why are you like trying to be in on the conversation? Or why are you saying that? Or why are you acting that way? Or why are you being a brat? Why are you talking back? Was trying to get justice yeah. i was not being a brat yeah. i was oh, i was probably overstimulated uh like just so many things like i was called a brat so many times as a child and i was like a really good kid i was not a bad kid but if i talked back now sometimes i would talk back because i was just a kid but I remember so many times being told that I was talking back and I'm like, no, like I'm literally just trying to get a legitimate answer. Yeah. Like, no, I, 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 yeah. yeah. And like, well, and I remember being and like, because I was a kid, I was just like reprimanded because for being no, smart. No, that is so relatable to everyone. I guarantee autistic people relate to that from the point of view of, so I was always called a smart ass right away when I was a kid. Right? I'm, I've always got an answer to everyone. It's like, but it's not my fault if my answer is actually smarter than what, than, than what you That's said. Right? That's what yeah. I said. So you're going to punish me? I felt like Matilda. I'm like, wait, so you're punishing me for being smart? <laughs> yeah, and, exactly. And that and that continued into the workplace. And then bosses yes. would get shitty at me because I actually had legitimate – but they would stop giving me reasons or excuses. They're not reasons or excuses. They're answers to your stupid bloody questions. But, but you know, in saying that too, um, etiquette and authoritarian figures, you know, they're social constructs. And we're talking about an autistic brain that it, that it, you know it has challenges in communication and interaction, which yeah. is was formed by social constructs. So, yeah. you know, my ten-year-old son, you can't tell him you're an authority figure, right? That uh, apart from potentially maybe you know like a policeman or a fire brigade or you know he he does it. He, I don't care. Like he does. I'm his dad. I'm like, mate, you can't do that. And he might listen to me, but he's like, but he, that's not his go-to thing. He's like, I might as well, honestly, I might as well be like a producer and he's the director. And I'm like, I mean, it's so, but I'm the same, you know, and, and it's, I, I kind of, I, I'm like, well, I don't care uh, if this is who you are or this who you are. This is wrong or this is right. And there's this kind of, this kind of fairness and this justice and this right or wrong. But again, people yeah. think that's high and mighty, but yeah, actually to be factual about it 
It's yeah. actually because our brains are concrete, rigid, black and white. Same. Yes. I'm not saying I'm not saying we are as people, but I'm saying our brain. Now again, there's two sides of the brain, and the autistic brain is stronger, logically wired than emotional. So my, you know, for example, neurotypical people have a more emotional brain, right? They, they, so they don't see the logic in things as well as we do. And of course, they, they have more emotional insight than we do. So we might be not as emotionally intelligent as them. It might have taken to my 30s to be emotionally intelligent to a, a teenager. I don't know. But the point, I'm, the point is, our brains are so much more logical. It makes sense. Logic is etiquette and authority and respect. And yes. you know, this, this is yes. why we can have such horrific childhoods and also are virtually unemployable. <laughs> you know, like... Um, uh- Yes. Like I got in so I used to get in trouble because like I would have a customer be mean to me and I'm just like, I don't know who you think you're talking to right now, Mm. but you're not going to talk to me like that. And they're like, well, you can't talk to the customer like that. And I'm like, why the fuck not? I'm like, well, the customer's not, the customer's not right. Just because they say they're right. I hate that saying the customer's always right. Screw that. Because like, and I could never, I could never work because I used to work at, I don't know if you know what Dollar General is. It's just essentially, it's, it's a horrible place here in America. They pop up everywhere. They're just, they're this tin box (laughs) with like just a bunch of like cheap stuff in it. Anyway, I used to be a manager of one way back in the day and yeah, I would have people talk to me and because I was the manager, like. I could be like, I don't know who you think you're talking to because like nobody could yell at me because I was the manager. But then eventually someone complained and I'm like, dude, I'm not going to let customers treat me like shit. Like I'm not being like overly mean, but I'm just like, this lady was like, well, this says it was on sale and this, I need that price. And I'm just like, well, that's not, that's not going to (laughs) happen. Like, because that's, I'm not getting in trouble so you can get a price. Yeah. And that's logical and factual and right or wrong. That's, the, that's a logical explanation. And that's why, you know, unfortunately, so here's the thing, right? If, if our legs didn't work, it'd be just a given that, that they would provide us with ramps. But because our brain is different, they don't believe in mind ramps, ramps for the mind, which is, you know, Kim or Orion, that this is not rudeness. This, they're autistic. You've said something, it's not factually true to them, so they've told you that it's not factually true. Now, see, this is the issue in the real world, whether it's school or, or workplace, the HR will, it will reprimand you, you know, the human resources whatever, will reprimand you for being uh, autistic because they expect you to be neurotypical. Now, that's, they can say what they want to say, but the fact of the matter is you need to be neurotypical in the workplace yeah. or you make the, you or you make the neurotypicals uncomfortable. Now, yeah. the fact, the problem with that is if your legs don't work, they're not going to say you're in trouble because you didn't walk up the stairs this morning. That's against HR policy, right? But, of course, if you have an autistic brain, and that's the only part of you that's autistic, your brain is wired differently. You can't replace your brain. You, you literally would have to get, you know, the, the brain out and put a new brain in. You, you, so you can't ask... You you can't ask a blind person to see, you can't ask a person whose legs don't work to walk, and you can't ask an autistic person to be neurotypical. But of course, in your workplace, in my work, whatever, they are. And this is one of the core issues of, you know, late diagnosed autistic people is, you know, they have that diagnosis, but it's like, yeah, great, but it's going to mean chicken shit in the workplace. They don't give a crap. And in addition to that, I've got no chance of ever getting a job or a career or holding it down unless I continue to mask and suppress and, you know, for the rest of my life and where where is that going to get me? That's why part of the reason, like, I do want that official diagnosis because uh, for those of you watching, I am self-diagnosed, which I believe is a for autism because you know yourself best. And it's not like I just came on here and was just like, do, 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 I'm autistic. Like I've been doing months and months of research just as I did for POTS. So don't justify, please don't justify yourself. And before, I'm I'm just going to jump in before you talk about the the other reason, especially for women, uh, girls, and depending on what what race you are, depending on what country you're in, depending on how much money you have, depending on how long you have weight, depending (laughs) on how depending on how stupid the doctors are, there are thousands of barriers getting in the way of anyone who's not a young white boy for an autism diagnosis. So self-diagnosis is completely valid if you believe you've given it a really a really good shot at researching and learning it and you're yeah. not just trying to get out of a cornflakes packet, 
as a cereal box. The, the fact of the matter is um, there are many barriers. And even if you have the money and you can wait and you get an appointment, you'll probably get some moron who, who's, you know, who hasn't learned anything since the 60s. And, you know, like I, I got told by a guy I went to uni, university, and I, and I could make eye contact with him from time to time so I can't be autistic. Right. So, so the bottom line is there are many barriers. So self-diagnosis is not something you gonna, you need to justify or you will ever justify again. That's coming from me. Thank you, Kim. <laughs> and um, the reason why an official diagnosis would work, you were going to say there are benefits to that and then you were going to talk about some of those benefits. Yeah. I was just going to say that, like, I personally, like, I, I, I would like that, you know, diagnosis. But at the same time, it's like, you're right. People are you know, will they, I, I just, I'm scared because it's like people, people say, like I, I, I had someone, because I've been briefly talking about it online, I would say this is my big like coming out about it, <laughs> but you know, people will be like, you don't look autistic, and I'm just, I'm so scared, it's the kind of like, you don't look like you have POTS or you're faking your POTS, I'm just scared for another level of that, just, I don't know. You know what I mean? No, just, yeah. It's a bullshit uh, thing to say. It's a bullshit thing to say. There's no, like, I acknowledge it. I get it. You'll get them regardless because you're just massive. But the, fa the fact of the matter is um, this is about you, not them. And is, yeah. in the end, um, sometimes people like us who potentially, maybe potentially have grown up with very little self-worth and very high-end high self-loathing would like a professional to put on a shiny bit of paper that we actually are right. This actually is us and we're not just broken yeah. and bad yeah. and useless and we're not what we think parents told us we were. Okay, mm -hmm. and that actually helps. And my answer to that question, if that's a question, is, well, yes, I think you can. That, I think that is something that actually is, is something that you feel. You do feel that. I do feel that. Um, it gives me – it validates me. Um, but um, it's, not, it's not possible for everyone and that's sad. And if, if a white man can have bad experience in the assessment phase – God only knows how girls, women, you know, uh, how other races, other countries. I mean, so it's like, the, and then, then it comes down to do you disclose it? Now, what if you had a kid and you knew that if your kid discloses it, they can't have their dream job of, I don't know, following their grandfather into the Air Force because you can't be autistic and fly a plane, no. right? So, okay, cool. You're not disclosing. Do you see how this just snowballs? So disclosure is a massive a massive issue for autistic adults, but assessment is this should be the least of your worries. Um, and yeah, you just you just can't let people push you around and get you down. Um, in the end, you, you know you've got to do what's right for you. And and you know that that's the thing. You find your tribe, and you know. And yeah, if you and I know I'll just, have so many people yeah. support me. I know that. Yeah. After yeah, this video 100%. comes out, I know there will be so many people that are like, "Wow, I had no idea that Kimmy was autistic." Like, I feel so seen now. I know that and that makes me feel so good because I know while this is really hard for me, I know like about my POTS, like it's it's important for me to talk about because yeah. it, it's going to help somebody and I uh, and also it's important for me to accept that this is who I am and I want everybody to know that and I want everybody to know, you know, this is how my brain works, you know, if I... <laughs> You know, if I seem a bit awkward when you come up to me for a picture, you know, it's not you. <laughs> it's it's just, oh, okay, yeah. And not that I don't want to, but it's just, it might be me or it it just depends. You know what I mean? It's just. Yeah, I, I get it. You know, you're combining these life experiences um, with, you know, the, with the world at large and, you know, you, people love you, um, but you still have challenges they will never fully understand. <laughs> and. You know, that's something you've got to balance. I think it's a challenge um, for, for all of us. There's no question about that. I mean, I, I have an example of a chat. Like, so I was so upset because I recently, like, I did a video or like, I, I work really hard on my videos and the cigarette mom character I've created and da, 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 and all this stuff. And then somebody rips off my character in one afternoon and makes a video. And I'm just like, okay. That took me all that work, all that time, everything that I could put myself into. I remember I was sitting here with Hannah and I was just so upset because I'm like, people don't get how much it takes for me to film a video yeah. and get yeah. ready to film a video and get the script yeah. ready and do all that. 
and then some bozo whom I collabed with rips me off. Oh Fuck God. that. Fuck <laughs> that. I was so pissed. I was wow. so pissed. Yeah. Like nuts. you're you move out to LA, you go and do your little thing day to day to day to day. And I'm sitting here busting my ass yeah. <laughs> and I'm not trying to like pull a pity party, but it's like yeah, the no. fact that the, that these able-bodied people like go off and just rip off my work. Like that's, yeah. that's a yeah. sense of injustice that I feel because I'm disabled and because I am, you know, autistic or it, it takes me longer to do it than this person who could just rip me off in one afternoon. Being an autistic person, from my experience, I can relate and I hope hopefully I can share with you that the, the key thing here that's different for your experience to someone else's is is their ability to say, you know what, that's they're flattering you. This, that means you're so big. That means you're successful. You know, they can't ever be you, right? They're saying those things, which makes sense as a neurotypical person. But all you're thinking about is, I'm not letting this shit go. It's wrong. You know, it's it isn't the right thing to do. Uh, I'm angry. And as an autistic person, we you know we we really focus on we focus on the minutia of right and wrong and the idea that this is not acceptable. And I unfollowed them is... right away. I was like, screw yeah, you. Yeah. I unfollowed, but... I was like, I collabed with you and you did this to me, screw you. Yeah, I'm no, but that's not, yeah, but that's clearly not acceptable, right? But no. our brain struggles to let go of that stuff disproportionately to say, say someone else would go, oh, well, just what just what happens. But but see, this is the point I'm, I guess I'm making is this shows how hard it can be to kind of because we're not doing this for just jokes like we're, i'm actually we're trying to help people here right yeah. to, it's not easy uh, and it takes it takes a massive amount of time and effort um yeah. you know to, to to do these kind of things and frankly i'll be honest with you frankly and i say this from time to time you know i'm i'm pretty much tired of life i've pretty much got i've pretty much got to the point where i feel like an 80 year old man like i'm you know i wouldn't By even say way, i'm suicidal I, I yeah i always tell people i'm not suicidal i'm just tired I'm just tired, man. Oh. Ryan, when I tell you I say this every day, yeah. I say this every single day. I say yeah. to my wife, I don't feel 26. I feel 66. Because yeah. I get up and I'm just like, oh, like I just hurt. It's exhausting, yeah. It's exhausting. And it's just like, yeah, I'm not suicidal, but I'm tired no. of being tired. Yeah. I'm tired I'm, of being I, I, I really, tired. Yeah, people think we're, we're delusional. I'm really, no. I really don't feel suicidal, but, I, but I'm not especially phased if it all ended. Because the fact of the matter is every day is really tiring. Yeah. Um, when you it's... live day to day to day like that, it's exhausting. And some people can't even fathom it. And it's like, but we're just going about our lives. We're trying to make it work. And people are like, well, why are you so depressed? And it's like, because some days I can't hide it. <laughs> some days it's not yeah. as easy to hide as others. Like, I'm going to, you know... So I, the way I completely understand that is I, I get it both mentally and physically. I just, yeah, I feel like I've lived five lives already. Oh man. Yeah. No, I'm, <laughs> I, I could, you know, obviously when you're preaching to the converted your sister, uh, but, I mean, seriously, it's ridiculous. Um, and it's, I, I wish I could explain it in a way where it didn't make me feel, didn't make me feel so small. Like I'm, like I'm minimizing real people's struggles. Like it, yeah, I'm not, no, it, know. It's, it's just really, yeah. Um, and it's sad too, when you have like a family, like obviously you've got a wife, when you have a family, you, they think they must think, well, what are you, what are you, what are you saying about me? You know, but it's like, it's not even it's not even it's not even connected to that no you know, it's not even connected to that it's like but for you i'd be gone i i swear to god if i if i didn't have my family i'd be gone man well and um, that's what i say to hannah because i have the hmm. same thing and like she knows because we've had not not a fight but like we've had this discussion well what do you think about me then da, 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 da. and i you know i've had to say you know this is nothing about you and hmm. you know and and like the I've said to Hannah, if it were not for you, hmm. I could, yeah, I wouldn't probably be here. Yeah, I'm in love with this conversation and, and meeting you. Uh, I have to let you go. So it's unacceptably long now for you uh, to be being such an awesome person and also, uh, you know, having lots to do anyway in your day and the fact that it's the end of the day for me. Um, but you know what? Can I just say, hey, thank you so much for being so open and honest and authentic. And like, there's so many. Um, not just not just women out there, but there's so many late diagnosed autistic people, or even just people, you know, who may be experiencing you know pots and different things that really benefit from someone like yourself um, being vulnerable and open. Um, so, like, seriously, thank you for for thank doing you this. I I really appreciate it. 
thank you for giving me a platform, you know, because uh, obviously you have a lot of autistics that watch you. And so like, I hope that I, 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 I brought something to the conversation and that um, maybe I helped some people. Um, and yeah, if, uh, I'm going to be probably, I, I don't, I don't know how much I want to talk about it. Like, uh, not that I won't talk about it on my page as much as I do POTS, but like, I'm definitely going to be talking about my autism journey and that kind of stuff, because I, I really do think it will be beneficial for people. Uh, and I just, I, I, I that's what I want to do at the end of the day. I know it sounds so cliche and so many people have said it, but like, I really, I, you know, if I could do anything with what I've been given, I just really want to help the world and change the world. And so I'm, I'm glad that you, you've given me the opportunity to do that with your page. And I, I just thank you so much. Anytime. Oh, that's a neurodivergent mind really at play here. What, what do you do it for to change the world? It's like, seriously, it could have picked anything bigger. Um, but that's literally how we work. That's literally how we tick. You know, there's so many amazing and incredible, um, you know, autistic content creators, some fantastic autistic women that I've, uh, I've met through the journey. So, um, you know, hopefully you guys will be able to um, chat and continue this conversation as well because there, there's just some fantastic people out there and it's so great to have you. But anyway, I am uh, forever in, in love and thank you so much for your time. Um, it's you. been the bestest, Kimmy. Thank you. Thank you so much, Orion. I really appreciate you. If you want to learn more about other types of conditions that can co-occur for autistic people, check out my playlist, Co-Occurring Conditions. Or maybe you're more looking for some collabs. I've got a playlist for that too. Yeah, it's called the Collaborations Playlist.